All right. Uh, Christopher Allen here with you from Allen Interactions, uh, and I'm joined with Matthew Wren. And I'm excited about our conversation today. We're going to talk a little bit about augmented reality and what's what's actually happening out in the wild and in 2021 and how instructional designers and trainers might be able to harness this technology to do something interesting and cool. Uh, Matthew, can you give yourself a, a little introduction to our, our audience here today and, and what your expertise is? Yeah, so uh, my name is Matt Wren. I am the co-founder and chief technology officer of Bundle AR, which is an augmented reality platform. Uh, my background is in technology prototyping. I've been developing edge technology. Uh, apologies, my birds are apparently trying to say hello as well. <laughs> so they, they would be Royce and Hadrian. You can't really see them, but I'm sure you'll be able to hear them throughout this. Um, but no, I've got a, a heavy background in technology development, content management systems. Uh, we've been working on, you know, I've been working exclusively in, in uh, immersive technology now for seven years, eight years. I kind of lose track of time, honestly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining me again today. And, you know, just like at a live conference, I think, you know, one of the things that piques everybody's interest is, is seeing a demo or an example. Um, and you guys have been doing some cool stuff for, for Microsoft. Um, do you mind sharing your screen and, and showing us what kind of a, a cool and hip augmented reality experience might look like today? Yeah. Are you able to see the mobile device? I am. All right, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to start from scratch. So a mobile device, Again, I'm not even going to go into our application to start because it speaks to the use case a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go directly to the device's camera. Uh, so I'm pressing the camera button, and I'm going to talk through what I'm doing because it just helps because you can't obviously see me pressing stuff. Uh, but what I've got on my computer here is I've got a QR code. And that QR code you know, could be anywhere, but in this case, it's just on the computer screen. You'll notice that that little Safari link up top showed up. Um, and I want to demonstrate this because this is, uh, this is ultimately kind of the longest experience for how what it takes to get into an augmented reality experience. So if I didn't have the Bundle AR app on my device, which I do have, uh, I would go down here and I could press one of these buttons to be taken directly to the Play Store to download it. Um, since I do have it, I'm just going to press this orange button here, and it's going to give me the option to open it. Now, I want to, you know, kind of back up and state, this is in iOS using Safari. If you were using any other web browser, and you were using Android, or even on iOS if you were using Chrome, you don't have to do that kind of inner and step of going to that web page and pressing the button. Everything just sort of happens automatically. If you don't have the app, it'll take you straight to the store presence for our app so that you can just download. You don't have to do any searching. If you do have the app, it'll take you right into the app and do what it just did right here, which is it automatically entered that code. So I can now press download bundle. And I want to kind of sp speak to the fact that you just saw how long it took to download that augmented reality bundle. It just downloaded to the device in that couple of seconds and it opened it up. And now what I'm going to show you is the first thing we're looking at here is kind of the back of a box for an Xbox. And you'll see that that little white dot appears, which is the Xbox logo above it. If I press that dot, it's going to load a video. Now I've got, this video does have audio, but I have the audio turned off on my device so I can keep talking. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to double tap on the video, which takes it full screen, meaning I no longer have to point my device at the box and it's going to keep playing. But if I pause it, I've got a couple options here. You, you can see it's got standard video controls, play, pause. I can use the scrub bar to move it forward or backwards. And I've also got that little option there that I can download it to the device. That's one example. Let me get to a different one. And in this one here, what we're looking at is a different side of the box. And what you're going to see show up is you're going to see that there's actually a 3D model of the Xbox that shows up here. And you can see those little green dots that are kind of floating in space, labeling either you know, the box itself or the 3D model of the Xbox. And if I press the 3D, the one on the 3D model of the Xbox, it provides me more information. That's what we call a label. It's a neat little feature that allows you to label things in 3D space and add more information. And in this case, I can even include a link, that, that little button that says tech specs, which will take me to a web page for tech specs. The other thing I want to point out was there was that video, which is a product explosion that also appeared. It just played. We just, you know, I didn't point it out while we were talking about it. The next example I'll show you, this is the actual back of an Xbox. And you can see that there's that little green button that appears that says Start Tour. And what I want to point out here is, you know, this, this is where we start talking about how can this be used for training. So up top, yeah, there, there was a product example and there was a way for me to like label the 3D model of something and all the different parts of it. But what I want to show now is like, okay, well, how would you do a procedure? If I wanted to teach somebody how to do a procedure, 
I press that start tour button and you can see that it's highlighted, you know, in this case, the power cord and has given me more information about that power connector up top, which was something that Microsoft was very explicit about us including, uh, because apparently, you know, plugging it in is something they end up getting a lot of support calls about. <laughs> and as I cycle through and press that next button, it goes to a different set of connectors. Once I get to this third one here, that's the, uh, the storage expansion. And you'll notice that I have a sort of another button within this step of the tour where I can press that and I can even launch a second, you know, kind of a secondary experience within the tour, which is an additional information video. I'm going to, I'm going to exit out of that really quick and then just step through again and start completing the tour. And once I get to the end of the tour, it's going to tell me tour complete. Cool. I wanted to point out that again, this is made to work on the physical device not just a picture of it. So if I pointed an Xbox controller, in this case, the controller is the marker. So I don't have to have a manual or I don't have to have all those things that you throw out after you're done doing an installation. You can actually point at the equipment that you regularly have. Mm -hmm. And in this case, if I was logged into my Microsoft account, when I press that subscription question button, it would take me directly into Microsoft Microsoft's support site where I could then get support. So how, you know, that's an example. But what I want to talk about is why that's important, <laughs> because ultimately that's cool. Okay, we're showing you some neat augmented reality stuff, but why does that matter? Yeah, um, yeah, so and let's let's jump into you know talking a little bit about you know where where performance support can can really be helpful today. You know, I I think about you know the experience of um, you know no longer being necessarily attached to a desk in an office, and we're right. doing more stuff out and about. And, and around and, and the thing that we're carrying with us everywhere is 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 our phone. And you know the experience that you just showed, and as you were noting, you can take your device and point it in front of a physical thing. It doesn't need to be on a manual, but you could be at a controller or at a control panel, uh, you know, a piece of machinery, the actual, you know, the actual game controller, all those sorts of things. Um, now you have something I think really powerful, which is you're getting help in a context that is hypersensitive to who you are, where you are, and what it is that you're doing. Um, you know, so right. you don't have to ask as much if you can have access to these materials. And if you have, if you've gone through some training, but you have a few questions about what you're supposed to do, or it's a procedure that you don't get a chance to do very often. Uh, boy, I think I think that's where it really shines. It's yeah, also, it's performance support. So, you know, one of the examples that we, we talk about with um, a customer that we had. So they're in the, the natural gas industry um, or I should say, you know, natural gas in general. And so, you know, they have procedures that they might have for like how to service a piece of equipment that, yeah, maybe they took training on this three years ago, but they haven't seen this particular piece of equipment since they did the training. And, you know, especially if you're working, you know, we, we talk a lot about field support out in, you know, out in the sticks somewhere where you don't have any support near you. The other big one, which is it's, it's just as important is you're on the 58th floor of the Hancock building in Chicago and your truck with all of your equipment and all your manuals is parked five blocks away. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're dealing with it, you're working with natural gas and all of a sudden something goes wrong. You're not going to, oh, you know, go through security and check out of the building and walk five blocks to get the manual. You're going to do what you can from memory. Right. So if you have the information available to you as you need it, when you need it, and where you need it, it's it's a lot more powerful to make sure that you're doing something. That, again, if you're if you're working with electricity or natural gas or something that could potentially be dangerous, this is important stuff to have and make sure you get it right the first time. Yeah, and then the then the next thing that I'm so excited about with augmented reality in conjunction with performance support is there are natural ways for organizations to pick up on measurement. Uh, you know, and one of the things that it, for an instructional designer who might be creating a, you know, a formal uh, curriculum uh, and training, you often wonder, you know, what sort of things stuck and what didn't stick. Uh, and it would be great to have data in the field that says some of these tasks, people always go back to performance support. And that might in your mind say, you know, maybe in training, informal training, before we send people out in the field, it would be worth spending more time and attention on these particular tasks. Yeah. And then kind of on the other side of, on the performance part of performance support is how often do we actually do these tasks in the field? Um, you know, there, there might not be really great measurement for the things that people are doing. If there was one place, I think, to aggregate that data for instructional designers and for the business to look at what's actually happening, I think, I think that would be pretty powerful. And you guys have been, been working on that, haven't you? 
Yes, and you know that's that's one of the one of the more powerful sort of features of augmented reality that kind of gets overlooked a lot is the fact that you're able to use this technology to measure how people interact with the physical world in a way that you really can't measure any other way. Um, I give an example. We did a project with St. Louis University Madrid where they send books out. They said this is the book to freshmen that have been admitted, but they're trying to decide if they're going to go there. And so, you know, St. Louis University of Madrid, that's an international university. So most of the students, they don't get to visit campus before they try it. So they wanted to mm-hmm. augment the book to kind of bring the campus to them a little bit. That was their goal. What they didn't expect that they got out of it was the fact that we told them afterwards. So they did get a little bit of a, a, little bit of a bump in their uh, admissions the next time they did it. But the other really cool thing that they got was we were able to tell them, you had over 3,000 interactions with this book, even though you only sent about 200 of them out. Mm. And on top of that, we were able to tell them page, you know, the page on student life got six times as much traffic as every other page in the book combined. So the next time you're going to do one of these books, you might want to expand that section because that's clearly what people are more interested in. Yeah. Um, when you start thinking about it in a training, you know, training perspective, is it goes to what you said before, which is, again, what are people accessing the most? What do we need to train on more? What's the support that, you know, people are, are really needing the most in the field? Um, I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, and I'll just really quickly, I'll walk you into our analytics just so I can show you um, what you can see when you're tracking the the physical, you know, you're tracking interactions. So I'm going to go into our analytics page here. And I'm going to pick up a very specific, one of our specific uh, augmented reality bundles. And that's actually not the one I was looking for. There was one I noticed earlier today where, you know, in this particular one in the last 90 days, because again, we're measuring how people have interacted with the physical world. So this, this is, you know, physical, a box and a pamphlet that people are looking at. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that in the last 90 days, 31 people have looked at it. 23 of them have been on iOS devices, eight of them have been on Android. But most importantly, I know that 325 of these interactions were on the product insert. Mm. Only a small number were on the box and some, some were on this, you know, the symptom media player to talk about the mediums. This this particular augmented reality uh, bundle that I'm showing you here is uh, a COVID test or a coronavirus test. And it's, 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 you know, important to note that, OK, the product insert is what gets the most traffic. So we should make sure that that's where we're focusing our attention in terms of how we're delivering content. Very cool. I, lo- I love it. So. You know the the experiences that that we looked at earlier for for Microsoft, I think, are appealing. I think there's some cool things that you guys have been doing. Where not only is it important to be able to capture and and get access to that quickly on your phone, but you know one of the nice things that that I like and have experienced myself is the ability then to say, I you know I'm done holding my camera at the box, right? I I know where I am, and now now I want to, um, you know, just view the video where it's comfortable for, for me to watch or maybe save it and, and use it for later. Mm-hmm. You know, an experience like that, how how long and what sort of skill set would a person need in order to put together something like that that has that sort of level of polish? Um, I mean, I would, um, I would argue that any instructional designer or anybody with a graphics background can do this. Um, look, put simply, augmented reality development is hard. It, you, you have to understand a lot of different sort of areas of technology. So you got to understand the content creation side, which is the, again, sort of where cra- you know, graphics designers, 3D modelers, instructional designers, they know that part. That's where their expertise is. But then to get beyond that, kind of the traditional way to do AR development is you have to understand gaming engines. So like Unity or Unreal. Then on top of that, you have to understand the deployment stack of what you're building to. So you'll usually have to understand something along the lines of like mobile applications, so Xcode or Eclipse or... Um, Android Studio, or if you're developing for Microsoft, you know, HoloLens or Glasses, you got to understand those pieces. Then you're going to have to understand the the store to get it published. So there, there's kind of a lot of sort of stacks of technology you have to run through to make this stuff work, unless you have a tool. And sorry if I'm, you know, I don't mean to be pitchy here, but, you know, we created a web system to make that part easy. And that's what we wanted to do is like, how do we get it so that people who can, they know the content, they know the content creation, how do they just can run basically let them create and then press a button and go um so so we've we've really moved now i think from the stage what you're describing is you know it it probably took a bunch of skills and maybe several people to put together a a bespoke experience right and and now we're kind of moving into the phase with augmented reality where maybe one person with with a rapid authoring tool can put together kind of the the same level of experience 
Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll share my screen again really quickly and just sort of show you the type of interface that it would take. And I can't, I can't share the creation of that Microsoft experience, but I can share the creation of a similar one. Um, so this is a, a demonstration bundle that we have for how to do training on a router, which is, again, sort of similar to that tour we did on the back of the Xbox. Uh, and when I go into this augmented reality experience, you know, it, it looks pretty complicated when I go in here, but this is, you know, relatively simple web-based drag and drop environment. And the big thing I want to show is the visibility layers here. So I'm looking at a lot of different layers of data. And if I sort of make most of them go away and simplify and just show the first step, you can see, okay, well, there's step one. You press, you know, and it gives the information about the research, the reset switch. Now I can make anything show up here. It can be 3D models. It could be videos. It could be these little boxes with text in them. You know, I've got a little graphic that highlights the specific piece that we're looking at. But what would happen is when I press that button, you know, buttons and interactivity is where the power comes in. So if I press next, what will happen is this visibility layer will go away and this next one will show up, which is mm -hmm. step two. And again, now it's highlighting something different, different information. Now you can see that if I, if I open both of these at the same time, that next button doesn't move, even though, again, it's technically two different buttons. Because, yep. you know, first one makes step one appear, step two appear, then this one will make step two disappear, step three appear, and it can walk through a tour that way. Um, and you could, again, make very, very complex, very, you know, information filled instructions using a system like this. But in terms of creating it, actually creating it, this is just a drag and drop interface. Like here's some assets. This is a, you know, this is a little symbol for a 3D bottle, 3D model. That's the symbol for a button. Yep. Um, you know, this next button is a button. This is a, a, a graphic with a 3D model in it. You know, and I can literally just grab these and drag them around the space if I wanted to. So if I go here and grab this asset. You know, for me to move it around a space is just drag it. So it, you know, this isn't anything, you know, more complex than what, you know, you do to put together a PowerPoint presentation, right? Not much. No, and I, we, we, I like to say if you can, uh, if you can, you know, insert a photo into a Facebook post. Yeah, <laughs> right. Because that can actually be a little complicated sometimes. But if you can do that, you can pretty much create this stuff now. And and I think you know that that's uh, an important lesson, but it's also probably smart to think about your your design of support as, you know, it doesn't need to be super crazy because you're expecting someone to also be doing something at the same time where they're using this technology, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to you need to help them just enough. Um, and if you added if you added way more features and way more extra complication, you'd you'd be venturing back into you know formal training instead of doing something just to help somebody right at the moment of need. Right. And I mean, you, you can use this tool to augment formal training. So formal training, you know, the, that's the biggest problem we have right now is you can't gather people in a classroom. So even if you're doing kind of the traditional training of, OK, well, you know, normally it would be 50 people in a classroom and a, an instructor led course and PowerPoint. Well, that's great. How do you do that when people are remote? OK, we can do it on Zoom and I can still have a PowerPoint on my screen. But if I want to have sort of hands on, you can use the augmented reality, trigger it off the PowerPoint and have kind of 3D models, even in your own space that you can interact with. Right. Uh, and that, that, that adds to the immersion that tricks your brain a little bit, honestly, and it helps you retain the information better. It helps you understand it faster. Um, on top of the fact that you can then also have that for performance support later, because once you have it, you have it. Terrific. Well, I, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate you joining me today and, and exploring how augmented reality has is, is come along. Um, I'm excited that you know an individual contributor or creator can start creating content with, with the right tools. And I'm excited to see how this, uh, this changes our industry and we start thinking a little bit more uh, along the lines of actually making sure that we're measuring um, the results the measuring the results and, and seeing how that comes together yeah I'll be so, honest, like that's that's one of the things that i've always said excites me the most about this tech was you know i've been playing with this tech for seven years and i've had the ability myself to create ar for that whole time so you know i've thought of ten thousand things you can create uh, you know i've gone down so many different rabbit holes but i personally up until you know six months ago never conceived of using this to train somebody in the field how to restart a furnace at a pumping station for an oil refinery like, yeah, okay, that's something I never considered. So what's really cool is putting this tool in the hands of, you know, a thousand, a million instructional designers and see what they come up with because they're going to come up with really cool use cases for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Matthew, and look forward to talking to you soon. My pleasure. It was great talking right. to you. You bet. Thanks.